It's time for one of my favorite segments, Can We All Just Get Along? And I'll begin tonight with a quote. Forever and ever, you'll stay in my heart, and I will love you. Forever and ever, we'll never part. Words, immortal words from I Say a Little Prayer, made famous by the queen of soul and the queen of our hearts, Aretha Franklin. Tonight's show is dedicated to her. And as we tape this show, the world mourns the loss of an icon, a legend, an American staple. Aretha Franklin transcended politics, transcended borders, transcended oceans, transcended language, and transcended hate, bigotry, racism, misogyny, homophobia. She transcended it all with her iconic voice. Aretha Franklin can be summed up in three words, family, faith, and a love for her fans. And as we close out this week of news, which has been nothing but a roller coaster, it is fitting that we dedicate this show to her. If you've missed this news, Aretha Franklin died today, Thursday, August 16th, of pancreatic cancer in her hometown, Detroit, Michigan, also known as Motown, where her soul career began at Mount Bethel Baptist Church. And the reason why she is our Can We All Just Get Along segment is because I think we need a little bit more Aretha in our lives and in America today more so than ever. For her entire, there was never a decade of her career where Aretha didn't have a number one single or a number one album. There wasn't a decade in her career where Aretha's music didn't touch everybody. No matter your color, your creed, or your citizenship status. There was never a moment where Aretha's words never resonated in our hearts. And as we sit in a divided country, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, Democrat against Republican, we need a little bit more Aretha. Ladies and gentlemen, this icon, this queen, transcended it all. Not only did she perform at three different inaugurations, but beyond that, she received the Medal of Honor, or the Medal of Freedom, rather, from George W. Bush. And Franklin recorded 112 chart singles on Billboard, including 77 Hot, 77 hot 100 entries, 17 top pop singles, 100 R&B entries, 20 number one R&B singles, becoming the most charted female artist in history. Franklin's other well-known hits include Rock Steady, Jump To It, Freeway of Love, Who's Zooming Who, Chain of Fools, Until You Come Back To Me, Sometimes, something he can feel. I knew you were waiting with George Michael, which gave George Michael his first ever Grammy win. And let's not forget her, one of her two best songs. You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, Spanish Harlem, Respect, and Think. America, as we mourn the loss of an icon, and a legend. Let's remember her life and her legacy. Let's remember the three things that mattered most to Aretha. Her, her fans, her faith, and her family. You see, what Aretha had that no other artist had was this. A firm foundation in her family to the point where she kept her family so private. She wanted, no like she didn't let her, nobody, knew much about her family intentionally. There was a time when her father was sick and the world didn't know. She performed and she kept it so private. And her faith, Aretha, and if you were to ask her, she would say it was Ray Charles first, but Aretha was, one of, was iconic because she gospelized everyday music. Ray Charles was the first to do it, then followed by her. And people forget that Amazing Grace, her, al her gospel album, is one of the top-selling albums in the world. 
But beyond that, Aretha understood that music can touch hearts and music can change minds. Music has the ability to transcend everything. And she knew that, and she knew the power of her voice. So much so, I was sharing an anecdote with a friend of mine who used to work at Good Morning America. Um, and she said she would never forget the day Aretha came to perform at GMA. And she said, now Aretha was such a perfectionist and she wanted to get it so perfect for her fans that her, the, the, the room had to be at the exact right temperature. And so it couldn't be too cold and it couldn't be too hot. And anybody who works in television knows that usually we keep the studios very cold for the equipment and for sound purposes and all those other things. So when Aretha showed up, you had to turn the air conditioning off. And she says a story about, like, she's like, you have no idea how hot it used to be. But nobody cared how hot it was because they knew that one, the moment that Aretha Franklin opened her mouth and belted out those notes, the heat just went away. And you were mesmerized by this queen of souls, iconic voice. So in, the, and, and in, in this segment, as you guys know, we try to find areas of coming together. We try to find areas of commonality. We try to find areas of shared strength. Aretha Franklin's career is that area of shared strength. Aretha Larice Franklin was born at 406 Lucky Avenue in Memphis, Tennessee to Barbara and Calvin Franklin. Her father was a preacher originally from Shelby, Mississippi while her mother was an accomplished piano player and vocalist. Both of her parents quickly moved to Detroit, where he became a pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church, where Aretha Franklin got her start. Contrary to popular belief, her mother did not abandon her children. And not only would Aretha recall seeing her mother in Buffalo during the summer, Barbara also really frequently visited her children in Alabama and Detroit. Um, but beyond that, Aretha was inspired by artists like Mahalia Jackson. She was the voice of the civil rights movement. She was the voice of the feminist movement. She was the voice of America. And as we sit in 2018 and we remember Aretha Franklin, Let's remember her for what she did. In the 1980s, Aretha Franklin lost one of her very dear friends to HIV AIDS. And instead of doing what the world did, which was turned a blind eye to this epidemic, Aretha Franklin leaned in and she did everything in her power, working with the Elton John Foundation and working with activists to call attention to this epidemic. And that is who she always was. She looked out for the least of these because she understood that with the power of her voice, she could bring voice and she could shine a light on some of the world's biggest problems. So, America, tonight as we close out this show, let's sprinkle a little bit of Aretha in all of our lives. And let's not look at each other with political parties or the blinders of race or the blinders of difference. And let's just look at each other like a rose in Spanish Harlem. Let's look at each other with respect. And let's look at each other as Aretha saw us all, as adoring fans, as love. And let's remember that as we try to bring this country together. Aretha, this show, this one's for you.